Kendra Scott. You know, yes! Yeah. <laughs> you know the bracelets, the earrings, the gems. Her jewelry is seen on everyone from Simone Biles to Zendaya. Her brand, by the way, is worth a billion dollars. <laughs> I love this woman. And she's one of the wealthiest self-made women in the world. More than $580 million. That's according to Forbes. Now, I remember when my friend Kathy Lee Gifford gave me my first Kendra Scott bracelet. I was walking around the Today Show like, what? <laughs> you know, it's, like, it's something about her line and her jewelry just connect uh, with fans of what she creates. And Kendra's brand really is about empowerment. She started her brand with $500 in her bedroom, an infant at home, and today it's sold in three countries with more than 100 stores. Now, for the very first time, Kendra Scott is taking us behind the scenes of building that empire. She's finally written her memoir. It's called Born to Shine. Do good, find your joy, and build a life you love. And Kendra is bearing it all, talking about being a college dropout, overcoming intense loss, divorce, a health scare, even PTSD. She's a mom to three young boys. She's a daughter and a caretaker, and she has a lot to talk about. Please welcome Tam Fam, Kendra Scott, to the show! <laughs> You, you know, people know the name Kendra Scott. I remember my niece, Gianna, who's watching, call me. I, all I want for Christmas is a Kendra Scott bracelet. But your story has been, what, 20 years plus in the making? Yes. And finally, this memoir. Yes. Why now? You know, first of all, the 20 years went by so fast, does, Cameron. Doesn't. I'll tell you, <laughs> it feels like yesterday I was just bringing that baby home when I started out of my extra bedroom. He is now 20 years old and over six foot tall. So I've watched him grow, and it felt like at this 20-year anniversary and during COVID, I mean, it was a time when we were all home more. I really was a time of reflection. Mm. And I kept looking at the news, and everybody's thinking, this woman is on fire. Yeah. She's got it all. She's got this and that. Right, right. And I was actually going through a real personal low. And I remember journaling and writing things down, and I thought, there's power and vulnerability. Mm. If I can share not just the success is what people see, but the failures, right. the hardship, the right. tough times, that if I can be vulnerable, maybe others can be too. Now you share a personal battle that you were struggling with a while. Um, you were a guest on Shark Tank. Yes. And you said, and I have the quote, as I'm writing this book, I'm on a big network TV show and I've done it all with a big genuine smile on my face. And in my heart, no one could guess that at the height of my career, I'm at a deep personal low. Yeah. So you're thinking, okay, yes. look at this picture. I'm all smiling, I'm leaning in, yes. I'm the picture of joy, <laughs> yes. but you were hiding so yeah. much behind that smile. Yeah, and you know, I think what I started to learn during that time is I was so good, even with my own family, trying to put on this mask of I'm good, we're good, mom's good, we're gonna be great, I'm happy. And that wasn't having an authentic and real relationship even with my own family. And when I started to realize it's okay to say, I'm sad today, or I'm going through something, or this yeah. is a hard for me, even my kids and I started having the most real, authentic you conversation. Thinking? You know, it just changes everything. Yeah. What, there they are. They are I so know. Cute. <laughs> you know, but what was at the, the heart of the sadness? Because I know in the book you said something I think can a lot of women in our audience can relate to. You said, I'd become addicted to being the helper. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I heard you all. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I always wanted to be the fixer. I was always the one that would come with the joy. If anybody had a problem, I was there to like, what can I do to make it better for you? In this time of my life, I had to learn how to ask for help. I couldn't be the helper. I needed the help. What did you need help with? So my father had two major heart attacks. He almost died. And when you read this book, there he yeah. is. Uh, he's my rock. Mm -hmm. And he's been my rock my whole life. And 
waking up every day and just hoping he has one more day, one more day, uh, was so overwhelming. But in the midst of all of that, we went through the pandemic. I had to close 120 stores. Mm. So I was so worried about my Kendra Scott family. I personally had some health issues and I was going through a divorce. And I kept joking, it can't get any worse. And, and, then, it, and then I'd wake up and like something else would happen. But part of Born to Shine is that we all have this light inside of us, right? But sometimes it can dim and sometimes it's hard to find it and we need other people to help reignite that light in us. Mm -hmm. We are all meant to shine, but we also need to shine that light on others yeah. as well. Yes. Yeah. Coming up, the life-changing scare that left Kendra feeling helpless and her son in the hospital for 28 days. How the health scare with her child changed her approach to parenting next. Welcome back, Sam fam. We are back with the one and only Kendra Scott. Most of us, most of you I know have heard of her jewelry, but for the first time, we're finally learning about the woman behind the billion dollar brand. And she's opening up about the personal struggles that she's quietly battled while at the height of her career and the lessons that she's learned in her new book, Born to Shine, Do Good, Find Your Joy, and Build a Life You Love. I love yes. the title of that book. And you know, you mentioned earlier, it's getting through a lot of one's personal baggage, but now you find yourself getting through something with your son yeah. who was in an awful ski accident. You have boys, Cade, who's 20, Beck, 18, and Gray, nine years old, and your son, Beck, um, suffered a terrible accident in 2018. Yes. So now you are mom, comforter, worrier, Yes. All of these things. How did that change your perspective seeing your child in the hospital? Was it 28 days? Oh, uh, 28 days we spent. And I, you know, fortunately, I was able to have a hospital bed right next to him where I could sleep next to him wow. um, for those days. We actually had a company meeting going on, our big, huge company meeting, over 800 employees. They did a cardboard cutout of me because I wasn't leaving his side. And I built a company. Uh, Is that true? Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Yes. Um, I built my company on family first. I was a, and Cade was a baby when I started and I wanted to be a present mom. I wanted to be there for my kids first and I wanted to create a culture within our company that did the same thing. So when Beck was hurt, the only place I was gonna be and everyone knew it was next right to his there. bedside. Wow. And um, you know, it's interesting. You wrote in the book, Kendra, you said, I was gripped by fear and helplessness. Oh my gosh, with any of the boys out of my sight, my heart would suddenly clench with the realization that something could go wrong. It's the parent, you can't keep a man forever. Your baby birds will go out, they'll yes. go skiing, they'll drive for the first time, they'll go do a lot of things where you can't protect them. Right. And the unknown variable happens and you had this accident. You know, when we, after you go through something like that as a mother and you do feel so helpless, I realized when I got back from that, anytime the boys would do anything, I was, I would almost be just clenched through. I'd wake up in the middle of the night sweating. I'd go in their rooms, they're teenagers, and like check on them like they were babies. <laughs> like, are they okay? Are they breathing? Is everyone okay? Right. And I remember going to see my doctor and, I, and he said, well, honey, you've got PTSD. And I said, no, I mean, Beck, I understand. He had a ski accident. I didn't have a ski accident. Mm -hmm. He said, but you experienced every moment of wow. that terror as a mother. And I sat there and I said, but I mean, I don't feel like I should, like I should have that, you know? But at the same time, I got it because it was traumatic. And sometimes it's not necessarily just the one that goes through it. Yeah. It's the ones that have to be there right with them. And that fear of anything happening to your kids yeah. is the scariest fear of all. Like I wanted to put myself in his bed every single day and take away his pain. And all I could do was be there to soothe him. Well, no, that's why as parents we say, when you hurt, I hurt. Oh, you know, that's worse. what you're experiencing. Yes. Yes. Um, you wrote uh, that you'd mapped out your dream for the next three years and that this brought you back to the truest version of yourself. One that I had felt that you'd lost. You talk about losing yourself. Yeah. What, first of all, what did you feel you lost and how did you find it? You know, again, we was going, I was going at such a pace yeah. 
and for so long, and also being this mom and a single mom. So the juggling and trying to provide for my family, nobody would invest in my company for 10 years. I had would go and pitch, nobody would want to invest in me. So I was doing it on debt, lines of credit. I mean, just so much pressure. And it was always forward, 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 forward. And I never stopped to just breathe yeah. and enjoy even the moment. The pandemic forced us, and I call it that shake the snow globe moment, yeah. to be home, to be with my family, to understand how precious time was. Almost losing my father, it made me look at the next three years of my life and what was gonna be the most important thing and how could I be most present, not just for my company and for my family, but for everyone, including myself. Yeah. I had to take care of myself. They say, if mom is not good, nobody's, nobody's good. good. That is the truth. <laughs> that is so true. Well, I know it took many years for you to decide to write it, but I'm so happy that Thank you've you. written this memoir. It is so powerful. Thank, Thank you, you, Kendra. And Thank born you. to shine, do good, find your joy, and build a life you love is out now. And the audience, well, guess what? Kendra wants you all to build a life that you love. I sure too. Do. So everyone is going home with a copy. Yay! Yes, you are. Yes, you are. I so, lived a surprise and delight. Oh, you, I, see, that's my thing. I, I love surprises. Delight. My team is like, wait a minute. Then they say, well, Kendra has her own surprise for your audience. Yeah. This is Kendra's best-selling Elisa pendant necklace. Yes. It's so popular <laughs> that one sells every single minute. Well, guess what? Don't wait another minute because you're all going home.